There we go. Smell, great smell. <laughs> Sainsbury's has been part of our high street for 150 years. Right, are we OK for bags? 26 million of us go through its doors every single week. Oh, yeah, would you like to try any hot cross bun? Go on. Oh, why not? Cheers, thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> but with supermarkets more competitive than ever... I like to shop at Lidl's, actually. ..history counts for nothing. Retail is changing beyond all recognition. Businesses that don't adapt fast enough will ultimately decline. The fact that you have to buy a celery in a plastic bag is ridiculous. During a crucial year, this retail giant has allowed cameras behind the scenes. You're going to meet Her Majesty the Queen. Really? Really? <laughs> as they attempt to grow their business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try to woo new customers. Oh, you made my deal. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, OK. Hi, great to see you, Thank you. And work together to stop themselves slipping behind their rivals. The M5's closed at the minute. Our stores are screaming out for their products. It's pressurised. You have chosen a very eventful day. We are in a little bit of trouble. Remaining customers, please take their mates to the checkout. Thank you. It's early June, and in the southwest of England, stores are enjoying some downtime. Quite quiet until summer holidays. And then we'll have our wits about us. In just a few days, up to five million tourists will be heading to Cornwall for their holidays. We just go from being very, very quiet in the winter to humongously busy in the summer. God help us all. I have seen it absolutely manic. Manic, as a customer has just said. Every summer, the most lucrative battleground for supermarkets is the Southwest. Coastal stores in Cornwall and Devon can see their sales more than double in July and August. We take as much in the summer as what we do, like the two or three days before Christmas, and it's phenomenal. With so much money to be made, every store in the region has to be ready for the influx of customers. So today is all about seasonality and what's happening, of course, going into the summer this year. As you all know, it's like our second Christmas. So some great opportunities for us to do two things, take lots of money, but also do a great job with customers as well. It's predicted that more Brits than ever will holiday in the UK this year. The Southwest Area Manager has called a meeting with store and distribution managers to discuss strategy of how to draw the biggest customer share. So, I'm now going to hand over to the boss. It's over to you, sir. Uh, firstly, thank you, uh, Steve. We're going to have roughly about three quarters of a million additional transactions that we will potentially see through the summer trading season in the southwest. That's slightly more than last year. So it's, it's a big number, isn't it? It's a big number, those additional transactions. Being ready for that and having a bullish approach, I think, is really important. So, with all that in mind, we thought it was very appropriate to set a 5% challenge on sales this year. So what you do to actually get that is going to be really crucial. We've set a 5% challenge uh, for each store manager to grow their seasonal sales um, versus last year. Last year we were helped hugely by fantastic weather and of course we can't control the weather. But I think this year with uh, Brexit and uncertainty, I've seen a number of articles saying that you know, people are more likely to stay at home this year. With so many additional transactions up for grabs, Stefan wants to make sure the money is being spent in Sainsbury's rather than in rival stores like Tesco and Lidl, which have a big presence in the region. Sales for me really kind of want to go for it. So my warehouse is full. Front store also, there's stacks everywhere. And then I guess the big point I wanted to get across to you all today, guys, is if we're going to make that extra 5% sales within our own stores, we have to go out there, guys, and absolutely chase it, which is my intention again this year. So my name's Mike Breslin. 
I am conscious that you do seem very uh, time constrained today, so I'll speak in a really, really fast Northern Irish accent. Um, if you've seen Derry Girls, I'm a Derry boy. <laughs> so Mike runs the Bristol depot, where all the stock for the South West is stored. It's his job to make sure the deliveries arrive on time. There is a big difference between delivering 10 miles to Bristol and 175 miles to Penzance. So the pressures that we experience are massive increased. But as you know yourself, your trade from one week to the other, depending on whether it's raining or sun, um, is, 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 is massively variable. So there is a backup, there is contingency. Should you guys go super duper in the trading world? We are gonna support you, do everything that we possibly can. Any issues, do speak to us. And that's basically it. Right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Finance team, HR, health and safety, stock team. This team deal with queries. Hi, Lorraine. At the distribution centre in Bristol, Mike and his team are gearing up for the start of summer. This is the, the planning department. This is where all the decisions on site are made. It's a bit worrying when you look at some of the people who are making them, but never mind. This huge depot is the size of 36 football pitches, has 1,000 staff, and supplies everything for the Southwest, with over one and a half million crates of produce leaving for stores every week. Everything that you will see at a Sainsbury store at one stage or another will come in here and we'll, we'll send it out. It actually is quite slick. At the end of the day, it's a price war out there within retail, and the cheaper our operating costs, the cheaper the product's going to be in store, and, and, and that's what it's all about nowadays. Mike's challenge over the next few weeks will be getting enough stock to the stores in Cornwall's busiest holiday destinations. Do you know where Bude's store is? Bude? There's New Quay. I'll take a walk across, I'll be there somewhere. These Cornish coastal stores also happen to be some of the hardest to get to in the country. The proper summer season kicks in within the next two weeks as the schools decide to close. Everybody starts coming down here with the kids. Camper vans, caravans, you name it. The M5 is, is where they go. And, and the problem with the M5 is that it's the main arterial route into the southwest. Anything happens on the M5, it, it causes us massive problems. It all comes grinding to a halt very, very quickly. With so much extra stock needed for the summer season and Brexit on the horizon, Mike's depot is working at full capacity. Where it's got confused this year is the, the Brexit position as well. So there was a lot of stockpiling going on because of, of Brexit. A lot of it was French wine, the, the, the necessities of life. <laughs> um, believe it or not, the biggest line stockpiled in the UK, as far as Sainsbury's were concerned, was toilet roll. Um, so, yeah, big concern over not having enough toilet roll once we left the EU. Probably a lot of people would say we needed that toilet roll before we left the EU because of everything we've had to listen to. If the stores are going to have enough stock to increase sales by 5%, Mike's 98 lorries will be driving up and down the M5 day and night. Have an extra car with you. I do. you do. One of the most crucial stores for sales in the southwest is Bude. Someone did once say that Bude's a bit behind the times, a hundred years behind the times, someone said, but that was one of the attractions. It's, a, it's still got its old charm. It might be the smallest coastal store, but last year it saw the largest increase in sales. And the company wants an even bigger uplift this year with their 5% extra target. Ah, it's one of them coupons. In charge of making it happen is store manager Karen. I haven't acted better properly, but she's a new manager, so we'll see how she gets on. This is Karen's first day in the job, and she's not got long to prepare before the schools break up and the summer crowds arrive. The view is fantastic. It's such a beautiful setting. I've been either a deputy store manager or store manager for um, a good few years now. I mean, it must be one of the closest stores to an actual beach, because I mean, we're right here now. This is the first time that Karen is meeting her new team. 
I hope she realises that it's going to be a nightmare. Morning. And welcome to your new home. <laughs> thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, great, yeah. Nice journey up. Only got lost a few times, it's yeah. OK. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We've got you a nice little smorgasbord oh, of welcoming you treats. Have. Cakes. And really have some cakes. What a welcome. In a smaller store, it almost feels like a big family. So obviously I'm the new girl coming into that that sort of family, but um, but they've been really welcoming so far. It'll be interesting to see how, how things change with the new with the new manager and everything. There's a few staff members that actually look forward to coming in because it's a good laugh with people here. So it's just a case of hoping that that continues with the with the big change we've had. First rule of management. Fine, thank Fine. you. <laughs> Cornwall is the number one destination of choice for British staycationers. So Karen is keen to see how well the store is set up for tourists. So this is all sort of the local lines, which I'm really, really into. Yeah. <laughs> so the Rattlers, Scrumpy, Korev. As soon as summer comes stores, around, the tourists River absolutely Cottage, love them. Cornish. And that's the plan then, so they haven't got all the Cornish stuff together. Together, so. no, it's always, it always has been spread. Cornish mead. It's kind of tucked away, yeah, it's isn't very it? Tucked it's, away. it's just an easy present, you know, like you do if you go abroad and you go in a French supermarket <laughs> yeah. and I'll get those biscuits yeah. and it's easy because I'm doing my shop. <laughs> so do we do like the biscuits and the fudge as well? We have some of the biscuits around Sorry, here, we're jumping right? all over the place, but my job is to use every inch of space wisely, so reconfiguring is going to be really key. Yeah, yeah so that's yeah, Cornish. That's so does that go I quite well think... in the summer? It does, but I, again, it's like the mead. I don't think it's in like a particularly yeah. enough place, open yeah. enough place to or promote. That you wouldn't actually know it's Cornish. Until yeah, you I know. It. Yeah, the layout of a store makes a significant impact on shopping behaviour, with customers 30% more likely to buy promotions and offers situated at the end of aisles and front of store. When I go shopping abroad, I like a bit of a one-stop shop, so. I like to be able to get my food and then if there's bits that I can pick up that look local um, for gifts for people back at home, it's just the easiest way of doing it, isn't it? So things like fudge and the biscuits, they're just really easy presents. So that's, that's what I'm really interested in. While the South West prepares for their summer season... So welcome to the vegetarian and vegan Christmas 2019 uh, gate two. We went through two submissions. In London, the food development team are already preparing for Christmas with a new vegan and vegetarian range. Plant-based foods is really growing, um, especially this year. It's just becoming a bit more of the norm, sort of meat-free Mondays, people trying to be a bit healthier. Um, and the options have actually become a lot better re more recently, so you can get much tastier products, uh, much better quality. Key considerations for this range is to allow us to offer the customer more choice of vegetarian and vegan centrepieces at Christmas compared to what we had in 2018, um, as well as incorporating sides, including vegan stuffing, that we have previously been missing compared to our competitors. Since 2013, veganism has more than quadrupled in the UK, with the meat-free market now worth more than £600 million a year. But Sainsbury's has struggled to compete with some of its competitors. You can see at the bottom there where M&S rebranded their nut roast. Waitrose Hero was the beet Wellingtons. Tesco had half a butternut squash that was carved out with lots of fillings. There was quite a lot of variance in the market. Charlotte has spent the last six months developing a range of meat-free food with Chef Robert from her vegetarian supplier. Today's the day the dishes will be tested by her managers and she will find out if she can roll them out for mass production for the festive season. We probably saw around 15 products, which we've now gone down to six for today. Um, there were lots of really amazing products, um, but we had to just take some out, just ones that were maybe a little bit too niche, um, too expensive, um, would be a challenge for the factory. It, it has to go out, no choice. And, you know, it's a lot of people depending on this. Robert has cooked a range of options, including mushroom canapes, a vegan version of pigs in blankets, and sage and onion stuffing balls. This project here is, it's normally double this size, sort of a three to four serve. 
Um, so in the centre of here, you've got um, wheat, gluten, pea protein, mushroom. You've also got parsnips going through it for a bit of sweetness. You've then got a really nice layer of spinach and the pastry around the edge as well. Not doing the best job of cooking, is it? She's tasked with the job of bringing to life a whole range of products, not just for Christmas, but then to continue with that pipeline through the rest of the year. It's difficult. The, the market is moving really, really quickly. My team know that I'll give them honest feedback. First, under scrutiny, are the stuffing balls. I know before we did get a cranberry on top, so we just add a little bit of sweetness, but if customers don't like cranberry, they could. What do you want in the stuffing balls? Um, so that is um, mushrooms, pea protein, gluten-free breadcrumb, yeast extract, salt, pepper, sage and onion. I can see what they're doing, but I would love to hear what they're saying. <laughs> I think one of the flavours is a bit too strong in there. I think it tastes almost like it's got blue cheese in it. OK. Is anybody else getting that from those? I'm looking like I'm mad. Which product? The stuffing balls. Almost like a blue cheese note. It's quite strong. I think sage and onion are quite strong flavours, so we can just, just play we can tweak it again. Yeah. What's everyone's favourite? Oh, I do like the shroom puffs, which is, which is probably the most simplest one to develop, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is fabulous. Short of a few modifications, the entire range has passed the management taste trial. There was no um, products men's, everyone was really pleased with them. Really, um, good. really well with all the flavours. It was really good. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Um, just on the stuffing balls, where we decreased the amount of sage and onion, they were now saying that the um, pea protein is coming through slightly, so you only get the slight off taint of pea protein. Okay. By something yeah, that's else why we look at that. That's quite easy. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chef Robert will now go back to his company and figure out if he can mass produce this range within budget and without compromising flavours. 80s Friday, July the 19th, and today they are saying it's going to be Frantic Friday with the biggest getaway for the summer holidays for five years. There will be 13.4 million holiday journeys between now and Sunday. That'll be four million more than last year. It's the start of the holidays. So the gin, then the caramel sea salt, then the vanilla fudge, so just the same as that one, if that's OK. All right, thanks, guys. And Karen is ready for her first season as the Bude store manager. The 5% challenge that we increased our takings by on last year. If the sun shines, it'll be fantastic. Sail through the weekend into next week and into the weekend after that and, and hit the 5%. <laughs> They're just taking their sweet time really getting here at the moment. Hopefully they should all start turning up soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Not the best of days. Could be worse. I mean, it's not raining. Spillage has closed the M5 between Wellington and Taunton this morning. Eight miles of diesel and oil is being cleaned from the road. There's no update on when the motorway will be open and people are being advised to avoid the area. It's the worst possible start to the summer. An oil spillage has closed the M5. Not only has it stopped tourists getting to their holiday destinations, but it's left Mike and his fleet of lorries unable to supply the stores with their produce. The M5's closed at the minute. Our stores are screaming out for their products. It started to rain. We'll probably have a shortage of drivers later on because they're stuck on the M5. Ah, it's pressurised. <laughs> it's pressurised. There are only certain weeks of the year where I actually earn my money. And this is one of them. Has the M5 opened again now? No, it's not. It's, uh, according to Traffic England, they're looking at around about half past 12. Got a lot of drivers that are, uh, that are stuck. It's shut between 26 and 24. Yeah. We've got about 
uh, well, just over 30 vehicles that are affected, and that's just going to get worse. Okay. Thanks, Darren. No problem. I'll keep you updated anyway, Mike. The guys will do whatever they can. I'm confident of that. The drivers have got an uncanny knack and managed to find ways around. So, yeah, fingers crossed we'll be OK, but it's, it's, it's something we could have done without. There's a backlog of about 20 mile traffic jam going all the way from Exeter to most of the way towards Bristol as well, so. Staff in Bude now know why they haven't seen an influx of tourists. But Karen is staying positive about hitting her targets. People that are coming down will still be coming down. Um, it's just the nature of the beast at this time of year. I believe they call it beautiful British weather, is what we tend to call it over here. After three hours, the M5 has reopened. Depot manager Mike has gathered his team to discuss how they will make up for lost time. Bloody hell, there's more people than normal. And how's the road now, Darren? You've had a deal with that all morning? Not very good, Mike. Everybody that's planned to come back hasn't come back. So. Where do you think that's going to leave us with time? Not in a very good position, if I'm honest. Well, if the M5 has been closed for that length of time, it's damage limitation, isn't it? So there's a few additional drivers at the front of the night plan to accommodate what we can with us. OK, well done. We're in a good a position as it can be, guys, really, isn't it? It's been a tough old day. Well done, Darren, and transport. Good shift in warehouse. Um, I just saw a crack of thunder and lightning a second ago, so God knows what's going to happen in the next 12 hours. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. OK, thank you very much. In situations like this, we do prioritise 10 stores in the southwest, the big seasonal stores, so hopefully they, they will all have their deliveries on time. With extra drivers set to come on shift to deliver as much summer stock as possible, Food developer Charlotte is at her supplier Hughes Mushrooms to check on her new vegan and vegetarian range for Christmas. Going to the factory, it gives you an opportunity to sort of see what the capabilities are. Also, it's a lot easier to sort of make amends of a product. So if there's something that we think um, could be changed in the product, it's a lot easier to do it within the factory. The main dish that Charlotte wants to sign off today is her vegan Wellington. Basically, the process for the Wellington, as you can see, it's quite complicated. We have two people wrapping, so one person's tucking in, first of all, the next person's finishing off the layers. It's very, very important that she gets that right. Yeah. And if she doesn't push it down enough, it will just come apart and it will be rejected. So, and a special girl on there. She knows, <laughs> she knows what she's doing. Last year, M&S dominated the vegan market. And a mushroom Wellington made by frozen food brand Cook was the top choice of the Christmas food critics. Just let's make a start on these. Before Charlotte tastes her Wellington, she's first going to taste the mushroom pie starter. I think it looks like a really good pastry. It just looks massive if someone was going to have this as a starter. But in terms of appearance, are you happy with it? It just looks really big. Mm -hmm. really only. Yeah, it looks it's massive. <laughs> big starter. Yeah, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be this big. Did they do the pastry any thinner? I don't know if that was... Um, when we were using the cutters and pressing down the factory, it might break. Um... With the starter portion proving too large, manager Donna calls her pastry supplier. Basically, when we cook it up, it's very puffy. You know, it definitely looks much bigger, like there's more pastry. Can we do anything on the thickness of the pastry? Are you actually putting in a docking hole in the top to, like, steam their skin? No. And you think that might make yeah, a difference? Right. It may not, but it'll certainly help. Inside, it can actually blow it up. It can actually expand like a balloon. So if we get Robert, basically, just to use a knife to put a few... Yeah, yeah, slits in it, is that what you mean, yeah? yeah? OK. Head chef Robert has cooked another batch. With the pastry expert's suggestion, a few holes in the top. No difference whatsoever. 
it just doesn't work for puff pastries, for different pastries, I think. With one product going back to the drawing board, Charlotte must now judge the vegan Wellington, filled with seitan and mushrooms. It's really nice with the mushroom dust out, just because you get that mm -hmm. moisture. Yeah. Because it's quite, if not, it's quite a dry centre, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's really good, Robert. Mm -hmm. But it tastes yeah. pretty good. It's in there. It's sort of almost really steamy in there. It's really nice when you get to tell the suppliers good news and just that all their hard work has basically paid off. And it's really exciting as well um, for us to see those products that have been made just in the kitchen going down the line and um, seeing what we can do to then be able to produce them and get them on shelf. The factory now has sign-off to put these dishes into mass production. But before they arrive in store, the British food critics will give their verdict on Charlotte's new range. Hot weather has arrived in Cornwall, and the holiday season is now in full swing. On the M5, there's a big delivery of food and drink making its way to Penzance, the most southwesterly store in the UK. My teacher, when I was at school, said to me, you'll never get paid for staring out the window. There I am, being paid for staring out the window. Paul is a third-generation lorry driver, and today he's carrying 40 tonnes of stock to cater for the mass of tourists descending on Penzance. All the best philosophers are lorry drivers, getting so much time to think. Where do we come from? How do we get here? How have we managed to survive as long as we have? Some of, some of the people I work with anyway. Socrates, yeah, he was a lorry driver before he became a philosopher. Yeah. I've just been on holiday. So I've just, been, I've just spent two weeks in Portugal and it's my first day back to work today. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. Lovely, lovely country and a lovely holiday. Darren is the operations manager of Penzance, and he's getting ready for his biggest delivery of the summer. What it means is basically that it's quite a substantial task tonight to get that delivery off, get it worked over late this evening and overnight, and again, ready for the store to be set up for our customers tomorrow morning. So it, it, it's quite substantial. It's the biggest of the week, and it, it will continue to be like this now for the next six weeks. We're going to get out and enjoy the weather at any time. Oh, I hope so. It's busy at the moment, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Lisa, what's, what's wrong with that one, then? Well, it's come up as a fridge alarm. It came down the first time, so I'm just doing it a second time to make sure that it's at the right temperature. What's, what's the temperature coming at? It won't go below 9.6. I mean, and it's, and we need to get it five or below, don't we? Yeah. So, OK. On the hottest day of the year and with a full store of customers, Darren's fridges are malfunctioning. It's all the way down there, around the end. The meat cabinet, um, the deli counter, okay. the cheese counter, the cream counter, the cream in the aisle, yeah. and the cheese in the aisle, and all okay. the fats. There's going to be two hours for an engineer. Refrigerated products must be stored at temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius. Anything higher reduces its shelf life. Darren is checking out the fridge's power source. That one's gone down now. Uh, there's a reset there, but pressed it. Yeah. Hello, mate. I wanted to get to try and contact someone to try and rush it, rush the engineer forward, but two hours. Like we can't do anything. Well, what we're doing, we're just got to start emptying. It's just a pain in the ass, isn't it? All right. Yeah, we'll do. I'll give you a ring in a bit. Cheers, bye. You have chosen a very eventful day. Hello, Pat. Get a couple of guys at least just to strip it. Okay. Bye. So I'm going to go and take off salad packs and salad dressings because that's gone down there. And I just need to go and organise that and I'm going to leave that there. Size, that might be the next one. The only way for Darren to save the produce is by transferring everything to the coolers in the back, where it can be stored safely at the right temperature. World politics what I would do if I was Prime Minister. I know. 
too much time for thinking. Yeah, I know. Yeah. On a clear and sunny M5, Paul is blissfully unaware of the problems going on at his destination. The traffic's been really good. We've done quite all right and just about due to come off of the M5 onto the A30, so, yeah, really good. It makes you wonder. I think there's been a bit of divine intervention. What's that? I'm just going to go and get some crates now. What's the chat? In Penzance, the fridge temperatures continue to rise. Right, okay. Online driver. Oh, what's his name? Alex. He's doing some now. Okay. The meat fridges are now malfunctioning, and this is one of the store's most valuable assets. Last year, the popularity of barbecues and holiday fry ups increased summer sales by 300%. We clear it, we lose some sales, and we lose a little bit of date life, but it's better than losing several thousand pounds worth of fresh meat. And it's just an inconvenience because it's very busy, and everybody wants barbecue stuff with the weather. Bad days like this could make a dent in Penzance's targets, and customers may be tempted to the little down the road. Yeah, yeah. Can I have some? Like, like I don't know sort of like perhaps he made like barbecue food, or was it yeah, pork you know, rib? Come in the vacuum yeah, okay. I can, I, can go, yeah. I can go and grab some. Hold on, look. That's right. I'll grab some. What, what size? The biggest. <laughs> That's my sort of food. Yeah, okay. All right. The frustration is the customer impact. We're affecting the availability for our customer, so that's the that's that's the frustration bit or the challenge bit. You got enough space in there for you? Uh, there's an, enough at the moment. <laughs> so much food has been moved to the coolers that space is running out for the stock on its way. Okay. Quarter past five now. The main delivery's due. So just, just under half an hour. So in the past few weeks, we've been covering quite a number of words and phrases that will help you get started off learning Spanish. Can you remember any of the words for really great, excellent, fantastic? Stu... Stupendo. No. Estupendo. 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 Not just pretty face. Gracias. I'm hoping subconsciously I'm going to wake up one morning fluent speaking. <laughs> fluently speaking Spanish. Uh, I don't think it'll happen, but... Tell you what, I need a beer tonight. The last of the fridges are empty. And finally, the engineer is on site. So the engineer's managed to get one of the compressors going again. Um, and already the temperatures are starting to drop a bit better. So we're now in a position where we can refill the meat that we emptied earlier and also in the position to refill the other areas like salad packs and cheese that we also emptied earlier on as well. And all in time... Voila! ..for Paul's delivery. And he's still blissfully unaware. It's always nice to get it here, get it done, especially with no drama on the way down. Now Darren has to get everything back on the shelves and deal with over 7,000 cases of newly delivered stock. Can't stop for you. Oh, I know, always is. Always is. London is in the middle of a summer heat wave. Happy Christmas, everyone. We've got a beautiful Christmas table awaiting for you all, so if you can all join us downstairs. The company's food development team are about to unveil their new Christmas range to the press. So I'm Charlotte, the developer for uh, Vegan Plant Base. Just wanted to give something um, a little bit more exciting for vegans and vegetarians at Christmas. Um, so something a little bit different from the nut roast and something where you don't feel like you're missing out. Um, so enjoy. Let me know if there are any questions or anything. <laughs> A bit hot and stressful, isn't it? I'm going to need the most too stressful in there. It's, yeah. In a bid to improve their vegetarian and vegan sales performance from last year, product developer Charlotte 
is trying to impress some of the UK's leading food critics. Tonight it's all Good Housekeeping, Olive Magazine, Delicious Magazine, so all of those um, big foodie magazines, basically. Good Housekeeping does best vegetarian, you know, best vegan products. It'd be amazing if our products sort of came out the top there. You just want your product to impress everyone, and the nightmare would kind of be that they didn't like what we were serving. I mean, whenever you create food, you want people to enjoy it, so if they turn around and say they didn't like it, that would obviously be really upsetting, um, but hopefully it won't. For many of these critics, this won't be the only supermarket Christmas dinner they attend this summer. Over the next two weeks, I'll probably go to about 15 Christmas in July. It's always good because each year they're doing something new and exciting, and it's great to be the first people to see that and try it. What did you think of the vegan course? I love the idea of that bacon. Really good. Um, bacon like. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the kind of the banana. Oh, the banana blossom, yeah, yeah the kind of base. Charlotte is hoping her No Meat Wellington will win a coveted place on Good Housekeeping's top ten list of Christmas vegan products. At a later date and up against her competitors, the dishes will be blind tasted by a panel and ranked in order of preference. In my opinion, I think Sainsbury's has always been sort of on the cusp. I think they've got very stiff competition. And I think this year they've picked it up a notch. But, you know, our tests are all blinded and are all sort of done by consumers. And so it's very difficult to tell what they will like um, and what they will say is the winning product. There we are, that's fine. I've got that. Have you got your nectar card? Yeah. In Penzance, thousands of tourists are enjoying their holidays. Busy. Really busy. Summertime, everyone's on holiday. But following yesterday's disaster with the fridges, the staff haven't had time to unpack the 40-ton delivery. It is a race against replenishment. Everything's been thrown into chaos, so, so it's just a massive knock-on effect. Jess is in charge of the Penzance store's online delivery service. When the trainers go on, um, that's like a signal to everyone that we are in a little bit of trouble, to put it politely. It's like when you're on a ship and you hang the flag upside down. It's basically our version of hanging a distress flag. <laughs> so, yeah, they're beautiful because things aren't able to be on the shelf to be picked. This is where we struggle with kind of availability of items. We've got any sweetheart cabbage? No, sweetheart. And if they say no, I haven't got it, then I'll have to sub it. The online part of the business is continually growing. And in Penzance, it accounts for 10% of their sales in peak season. We've been very busy this morning, extremely busy. 11,500 items. Every day, an army of pickers has to select the items for home delivery. I can't find any loose at all. It's just trying to keep it under control at the moment. It's not the easiest work, and it's pretty hot today. So I am in here doing the heavy lifting because I am a big, strong girl, and I can <laughs> chuck everything around that I need to, which is useful. There's Lyndon, another driver. With the shelves not fully replenished, delivery driver Alex now has to leave the store with several of his orders containing substitute items. The only supermarkets that deliver around here, uh, the main ones are obviously Tesco's and Asda. You see them out and about, they always give a wave. So. Tesco launched the first UK online delivery service in 1996. We're pleasant to each other. But we will still parking spaces if we have to. We, we will. Since then, its popularity has grown, with 45% of consumers having tried online food shopping at least once. It's already well, it's fairly busy already down there. All of these loading bays are full <laughs> all the way along. So uh, the main challenge with St Ives is definitely people, and especially little kids and dogs. It's just busy and most people get a bit of beach brain and they sort of just forget that there's a road. Let's see, see, this is... <laughs> see you, people. 
in the centre of St Ives it's a nightmare to try and get vans up and down and around when you're trying to run to a schedule. Pedestrians with no sense of self-preservation who will just walk in front of your van as if you're not there. Oh, right, through the worst of it. Ish. So this is where it's difficult to judge timings. Tiny, tiny back winding roads. Oh my God. That you can barely fit a van down, but you're expected two way traffic to go through. Daily challenges. Ooh. So I think they might actually be wizards. I don't know how they do it. Because sometimes they will be reversing down these things as well. A bit of manoeuvring required to get out of here. Yeah, I have no idea. I can barely reverse my car and I've got parking sensors on it. <laughs> so I cheat and I still can't do it. Yes. For anywhere. Ish. With some of the stock unavailable today, there's a number of substitutes. We didn't have two lots of the noodles, so we've only got one. A bunch of basil, the whole creation's gluten-free baguette. And it's Alex's job to deliver the bad news. Um, purple sprouting broccoli, we didn't have to got normal broccoli. And the chicken thighs, we just didn't have the organic ones. We've got the taste of difference ones instead. We didn't have the gluten-free cereal. We've got the free from chocolate cereal instead. I could open. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can take that back. No problem. Brilliant. No problem. Thank you. Bye. Lovely. This is just the first batch of missing items that Alex has to share today. There's a couple of subs. I don't know if you've seen them already. Yeah, we um, do. Yeah, so the, the, the Wawa peanuts, we've got the seed mix instead. The milk we didn't have, so we've got the uh, organic semi-skimmed instead of the normal one. Um, and the sourdough vegetable pizza we didn't have, I'm afraid, so we've got the spinach and ricotta one instead. So we don't want the pizza. Okay, okay. And we don't want the seeds. Oh, okay. Pizza's there. Pizza's easy. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of an angry seagull, to be fair. We didn't have the, the buttermilk, I'm afraid. Um, you, didn't and... the, you didn't have the buttermilk? Yes. Okay. We're making a cake today. Oh, OK. <laughs> Not <laughs> ideal, then. Sorry about that. Last drop of the day. There we go. Where would you like everything? In the kitchen, no problem at all. There we go. Yeah, I mean, you give me a hand tonight. Yeah, that's fine, yeah, of course. I haven't used those in quite a while. Oh, okay. But they sent me a very nice voucher. Who do you usually use? Tesco. Oh, right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I like to shop at Lidl's, actually. But I haven't got a car, and they don't deliver. Because I can't walk very much, so, uh, you know, if it wasn't for online shopping, I'd be lost. Have a good day. Thank you. And we shall see you again soon. Thanks for your help. No problem at all. Bye. All right. And then have a guy going out. Lovely. Oh, right. Same again tomorrow. Seven items. We're nearly there. We've got one person left out there. Um, so she'll be bringing everything in. One. I'm not dancing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it a trainer off time. This, this, is, this is the changeover of the shoes. This is like, it's like the changing of the guards. It means that everything's okay, so I can put my boots back on. There we go. Make sure that um, charcoal and um, barbecues are topped up. Yep. Emma is the manager of Newkey, another top performing coastal store. Again, there is some Stella, Stella upstairs in the warehouse, so we just need to top that one up also. Known for its surfing, partying, and boardmasters, the biggest music festival in the southwest. Soft rolls ready for burgers. Yeah. Are we are we happy with production for those for yeah. today? Yeah, we've got, got plenty. More out, we've got more out the back ready to go yeah. as well. Okay, brilliant, lovely. With fifty thousand festival goers about to descend on the town, 
Emma is targeting them to get her 5% increase in sales. The store is really well planned, ready for board masters. We've got alcohol galore, ready for that trade to come in. So, you know, we, we are absolutely set to take some good money. Not only is Emma preparing for the influx of customers, she's also expecting an important visitor. The organisation's CEO, Mike Coop, has made the 500-mile round trip from London to check in before they move into their busiest period. Hello. Afternoon, Mike. Wow, How are you, nice Emma? to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you? All right. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Really What's going good. on? Busy, busy, busy. Guys, nice. I have a special visitor. Nice to meet you, Alex. How are you? Nice to see you, Will. Nice to meet you. You all right? Yeah. Lots of alcohol. Lots of alcohol. So this is my stockpile for the summer. Party time. It is party time. But this is what you would need to take away with you today. Um, so this is, is our right? original Rattler. This is what we sold 3,000 units of in Boardmasters Week last year, that particular line. And then well, my the daughter's Rattler. boyfriend is a big um, cider drinker, so... There you go. I'll, I'll ask him to drink it as an official. Yeah, absolutely. 1,000 barbecues. There's about 60 on a board, so times that by... 30. 30. Oh, almost well, almost, almost yeah. 2,000. Yep, yeah, it's massive. 2,000 barbecues. It's massive. Bad, isn't it? So lovely to see you, Emma. Yes. You've got the stock to got sell? Got the stock. Or? Yeah, I've got some great colleagues, so... I'll be watching the sales numbers here. I'm sure you will. Lovely yeah, to perfect. see you. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you. Last year's summer was exceptional, so we had virtually 10 weeks of sunshine, and I think that put everybody in the mood for a, a, a UK-based summer. So fingers crossed that this summer will be just as good. It's locals. There's normally a few there waiting for us. In Bude, the locals are out in droves. Very often they'll come in very early. They prefer to come in and get home before the majority start. Morning, morning, morning. You all right? All across Cornwall, the summer season is nearing an end, and new manager Karen's Cornish counter has been a big hit. That is brilliant. Yeah. That is lovely. But you've been very clever because as you walk in, it hits you right now. Yeah. Well done, you, darling. Oh, thank you very and much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank Have a good day. Thank you. Have a lovely time. Lovely. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Make sure you have the proper arm I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, no, thank you. Cheers. The Cornish products are extremely popular. Can you have it over there? Yeah, and that one? It just feels like the plans that we put in place have kind of come together. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. Clever merchandising has left Karen optimistic that she will hit her targets this summer. 43 miles down the road in Newquay, thousands of people have arrived for the Boardmasters Music Festival. Top shelf on here, as you can see yesterday, we've absolutely been hit on white wines. Yeah, and wine. So, Johnny and Jordan, if they can pick and fill that um, for us for this afternoon, please. If we can kind of make, make that a priority job, I would suggest, out of everything we've been through so far. Yeah. Despite the sun shining, there's a storm brewing. Cornwall's biggest music festival has been cancelled just hours before it was due to open its gates to campers. 50,000 people were expected at the event. The organisers of Boardmasters have apologised, but say they had to make the decision in the light of forecasted severe weather conditions. Really disappointed, to be honest. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. We were on the train for about five hours this morning, or six hours, so... It's pretty disappointing, really. Yeah. Very disappointing. It's just gutting, really. So the weather forecast for today um, is set to change at 4 o'clock, and it's set to kind of be heavy rain from 4 o'clock right through to the early hours of tomorrow morning. And the news that um, Boardmasters um, was cancelled it is, you know, it is quite devastating. Really quite gutted, to be honest, because 
the volume of the youngsters that would have all probably put money in a kitty and come in and bought lots of alcohol in one go, that's probably been, that's been taken from me now, unfortunately. Instant potato. Yes, brown. sir. Let me just show you where it is. It's yeah. just down, down here on the right-hand side. Beautiful. We came down to Ballmasters, stranded, completely homeless. So pretty much a really good time. <laughs> really good time. You guys picked Sainsbury Cafe as your sanctuary. I probably would have preferred to see Wu-Tang Clan. I do like Wu-Tang Clan, but, you know, Sainsbury's just as good. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. At 4pm, the storm breaks over New Quay. But all is not lost for Emma. Although the sales of alcohol are going down, other items are selling out. Yeah, nappies is just it's a concern. So I've got a four-foot bay of nappies, um, and they have literally just sold in the last kind of 24 hours. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I still have my core customers and those core holiday makers that were still planning on being in Newquay anyway. You know, when you think about board masters, you think about the summer, you just don't think about babies nappies. And uh, it's just, it's not a, a board masters line, but it's just a key summer line for people coming down with their children, so. I've had to talk to the depots and say what stock we do and don't require now. It's changed in terms of what we would normally sell for Boardmasters. Um, it's not selling. But all of a sudden, toilet rolls is huge. Really kind of a key holiday maker's product. What are you guys doing? Oh, look at all this fun stuff. You know, I still will sell a lot of magazines, DVDs, colouring books for the children, playing cards galore. <laughs> See you later. Because they'll probably be spending more time in their caravan than they would be out and about. I'm just fingers crossed we will reach the extra 5% sales. Is that vegetarian rather than vegan? Yes, with the buttery uh, puff pastry on that one, and they've got cream within their sauce as well, so quite indulgent with all the dairy ingredients. At head office, product developer Charlotte is sharing some news with her boss, head of innovation, Claire. Um, so the winner this year was the, um, the Cook Portobello Mushroom Wellington, so this actually was the winner last year as well. Her meat-free Wellington hasn't made it onto the top ten list of Christmas vegetarian and vegan products in the Good Housekeeping magazine. And what else have we got? Aldi, um, I've got a spinach, leek and cheddar lattices topped with flax seeds. Um, it's really interesting how they're using seeds to get a bit more texture within the pastry, so rather than just being um, pastry product with sort of soft filling inside. Um, Waitrose have got a mushroom, cavalanero and mascarpone parcels. Again, sounds really indulgent, rich, um, delicious vegetarian option. I think the Good Housekeeping um, review is really interesting. It does take a long time to develop a product, but we're used to that. That's how it happens uh, within retail, but we're really excited to see it on the shelves. Um, so we panelled the No Beef Wellington with customers that would consider buying that for Christmas Day or within the Christmas period, and it panelled really well. We're confident um, in that product and just excited to see what customers think. It's really hard for them when they get a review that um, they don't feel is good enough or it doesn't reflect what they've put into their products. It is part of a learning experience, it's part of the job. Uh, so always say to them, pick yourself back up. At the end of the day, um, it's our customers that will decide what products they like. Um, interestingly, there are quite a lot of tarts, tans and yeah. The summer holidays are now over and the store managers have gathered for the end-of-season meeting. Um, good. Well, look, welcome, everybody. I think we'll just do some... Emma break. from Newquay and Karen from Bude are about to find out if their stores have managed to sell 5% more than they did last year. OK, so Stefan threw out the challenge for the seasonal stores and, I guess, to contribute to the region, an additional 5% extra is worth of money. The real numbers we like to see is, is always in the detail, because Newquay, um, as, as you know, Emma's the store manager there, they have 